Hey guys, you took your time. I'm Timeless Kid and today we're going to be reviewing a movie from 1983 called Two of a Kind. Two of a Kind is a film with everything. Great music, lots of laughter and a splendid cast. So, the film opens in heaven, right? And the voice of God informs four of his angels that he's going to destroy the earth for a second time. God said to Noah there's gonna be a bloody floody. By the way, if you think I've uploaded the wrong video, this is the plot of a John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John romantic comedy. The reason we chose it, to cut a long story short, is that it was very different. It's a different kind of script. It's not a musical. And it was the first time that we had a chance to do a film that wasn't a musical because everyone believed, hopefully, that our chemistry works without the music. Anyway, the angels tell Lex Luthor, sorry, I mean God, that there is still good in the world. And... The god god asks them to prove it, and so it zooms up on a man with funky sunglasses called Zack, who is played by John Travolta. See, I told you this was the right video. He is a failed inventor who owes the mob a lot of money. Therefore, he decides to put on a ridiculous disguise and rob a bank. It's going to get bad, but that's what we're trained for. He goes up to a bank teller called Debbie, who who is played by Olivia Newton-John. So we get the assignment of seeing the two leads from Greece back on screen five years later. So after five years, you'd think that their chemistry is still there, right? Spoiler, <laughs> it isn't. What do you need so much money for? Anyway? My ears, okay? Is. Yeah, they're gonna slice them off if I don't come up with the difference between what you spent and you gave me. I suppose you're trying to tell me that you mixed up with the underworld or something like that. I mean, I'm expected to believe that, I suppose, huh? I don't give a damn what you believe. <laughs> they're gonna cut off your ears, huh? Oh, you sound excited. Would you like to watch? Yeah. Debbie hands over a bag of money and a different bank teller calls the police and sets off the bank's alarm. But not before Debbie gives Zach the bag of money with her phone number taped to it. This might actually be weirder than the God and Angel stuff. Anyway, we cut to Zach getting home and discovering that the bag is just full of paper because Debbie had, in the 10 seconds he was she was off screen, stuffed his stuffed her bag full of money and stuffed his bag full of paper um, but she stole the exact amount that he stole for herself couldn't she have like stolen a million dollars and blamed it on him no one knew what how much he said also why did he also why did she give him her number because it's the bank's number not hers was it some kind of elaborate plank <sighs> If she, if she was pranking him, why does she do it in full view of other bank, of other bank staff? And more importantly, why am I trying to make sense of all this? Anyway, it turns out that Debbie is in need of money too, as she is behind on rent. And it, so that sort of justifies her action, I guess? Anyway. The mob, in the form of a slapstick comedy duo, breaks into Zack's house, breaks all his inventions, and then but Zack escapes out the window with some with his some of his stuff in a suitcase. I can't talk too long. I gotta poo. He steals a taxi, does some parkour before teen wolfing atop a van that swerves around a corner and he goes flying off a bridge and lands on a passing Debbie, killing them both instantly. The end. Are we really only 15 minutes in and the two leaves are dead? Seriously, what is this film? Okay. The angels convince God to give them another chance so they reverse time to before he did any of the parkour and one of the angels in a human form swerves a bus in front of the mob boss's car so he doesn't have to so Danny sorry Zach doesn't have to jump out of a taxi at this point we meet the devil 
who's played by a really old looking Bill Sykes with a Poirot moustache. After this, we see Debbie in her apartment, in an acting class, sorry, and her teacher criticises her acting. As this is Olivia Newton-John tribute, I won't say the obvious joke here. How dare you point that gun at me? Zack is standing on at the back, and Debbie has a genuine reaction, which is screaming and crying. Her acting coach thinks this is her performance and praises her. And no, this scene is not meant to be funny. <coughs> Zack runs away. Debbie goes home and somehow Zack is there already. So yeah, it's not creepy at all. All he did is break into is follow her around and break into her house. Alright, anyway. Debbie says she has spent half of the money and Wait, when did she spend half the money? We've already been told that the acting class was the day after the robbery, which makes her acting teacher wanting her to reenact the robbery seriously inappropriate. And so between getting fired, giving a statement to the police, going home, dealing with the creepy landlord, and then going to acting class, when did she go and buy furniture? And even if she did, where did she find somewhere where, where it has instant delivery i know looking for logic in this movie is probably the biggest waste of time anyone could ever do but can't there at least be one logical scene huh zach and debbie go out to dinner because the film remembers it's supposed to have some romance but the devil shows up causes chaos god makes it rain indoors the devil starts a food fight and the mob and the mob double act rip Zack's clothes because the film needs John Travolta to be topless in the following scene so Zack and Debbie can fall in love and have a montage to Olivia Newton John's music. Recent hit single, which has in no way been crowbarred into the, into the film. Do we deserve a second chance? How did we fall into this circumstance? from music videos sorry i mean montage they return home and debbie finds out she missed and she missed out on an audition because the film members because the film remembers that stories need conflict the devil tells the mob guys where zach and debbie are but they escape so the devil calls the cops on them and they are both arrested even though no one knew they are both even though no one knew Zack's identity, and Debbie was never actually under, sus under suspicion. Winston Zedmore is chief of police, and he tries to get Zack and Debbie to turn on each other, which Zack does, but Debbie stays loyal and makes a grand sacrifice. So at least that has, so, so at least that has, to, has some connection to the plot. Anyway, the angels try to convince to try to convince there's still good in the world but god says that unless zack makes a sacrifice by midnight he will bring a flood and kill everyone charlie angel steals the the tape of jack's confession so that so that they both get set free from the very hastily arranged trial i rest my case you rest your case? What? 
Oh no, I thought that was just a figure of speech. But Zack finds out that Debbie didn't give him up and was willing to sacrifice herself for him, so there is a sad pop video. Sorry, I mean, a, I mean, scene with another, another Olivia Noon John song on the soundtrack. Zach visits Debbie at the cafe and where she works. Wait, what? How much time has passed now? This is the day after the robbery. When did she apply for this job? When was her interview? How does Zach know she works there? Were they released from prison that afternoon? Anyway, at this point we're told there is an armed robber on the loose and, De and Debbie gets taken hostage. This is... So now this becomes Die Hard? Zack Dan sleeps over a car, scales the building, fights the robber, and hangs from the building. There's a further scuffle, then shockingly, Zack is shot dead while protecting Debbie. Then the police arrive and shoot the robber, and then it's midnight. Debbie holds Zack's dead body in her arms and cries while the body of the robber has vanished into thin air. Debbie tells dead Zack she loves him, which brings him back to life. There were no evidence of having been shot, no blood, no gunshot wound, nothing. All that happened when he got shot was some fluff came out. Charlie Angel tells the devil and us that the robber was actually created by him, by the devil, and he had planned it all, I think. Anyway, the film has to finish now, so the happy ending has to happen. Zack and Debbie are in love, seriously, seriously. How long have they known each other and they're already in love? Anyway, they walk off to live happily ever after and for a considerable amount of therapy. I'm Time Skin and I'll see you next time we go back to the future. See you soon. John Travolta is one of a kind. Olivia Newton-John is one of a kind. It took a miracle to bring them together. And a twist of fate to make them two of a kind. Rated PG. Starts tomorrow at a selected theater near you.